This video covers the standard operating procedure for the Beckman Coulter PA800 capillary electrophoresis instrument. The heart of the instrument is accessible through this dark cover. The standard solutions and the running buffer that is used to fill the capillary are held in small vials that are organized into trays. The tray on the left holds vials that are used to introduce samples and various rinsing solutions at the inlet side of the capillary. The tray on the right holds the vial for the running buffer and usually a vial that collects the rinse solution that is introduced on the opposite side of the capillary. The second door can be opened by pulling outward where the first door was hinged. This reveals the capillary that is housed in a plastic tube. This clear tube contains a cooling fluid that helps maintain the temperature of the separation capillary. The open end of the capillary can be seen by pushing the spring-loaded plastic strip that helps guide the capillary into the vial. One can also see a platinum wire electrode that makes contact with the buffer solution. A similar electrode slides into the buffer on the outlet side of the capillary. When the power is turned on, a voltage is applied between the two platinum wires and the current is carried by the ions through the solution of the capillary to complete the electrical circuit. Each sample and buffer vial must be filled with a syringe. First draw liquid through the open end of the syringe and then attach a syringe filter. The liquid is then dispensed through the filter to the target container. Often there is considerable back pressure that resist the movement of the plunger. It is wise to brace the edge of the filter against the rim of the glass vial in order to prevent the filter from popping off. Solution level should be brought to within two millimeters of the neck of the container. If the container is underfilled, it may not dispense properly when the pressure is applied to the filling the capillary. If too much liquid is used, the liquid may be forced out the lid, providing an unwanted electrical path that can cause problems. Liquid level in the two containers that hold buffer solution for the separation step should be matched in height as well as possible. Only these two vials need to be that closely matched. These vials have special rubber caps with holes to permit the capillary and the electrode to reach the solution through the top. Notice that the smaller ring indicates the side that should be oriented toward the solution. Turn on power to the instrument with the button on the lower right hand side. Launch the software from this icon in the upper left hand corner. Then double click PA800 to get started. The login name for general users is students and the password is also students with a capital S. The first screen may show a dialog box that launches a startup wizard. We'll ignore that for this tutorial. After a couple of minutes to initialize the system, an animated diagram called the control screen should appear. If it does not, click on the control menu in the gray banner at the top of the screen and choose view. The deuterium lamp for the detector usually turns on when launching the software. This image will appear pink if the lamp is on. If it's not on, double click the picture and this dialog box will open telling you the status of the lamp and asking if you wish to change the status. When you want to add or remove files for sample or buffer, click on the load icon. The inlet and outlet trays will take a few seconds to maneuver. Wait until they've stopped at the front end of the instrument before lifting the lid. Two trays have positions designated by a letter for the column and the number for the row for each container. The tray on the left holds the solutions for the inlet side, and the tray on the right holds containers for the outlet side. You will need to keep track of the position designating each file. Now we need to set up an experimental method. We pull down the method menu from the top banner and select Instrument Setup. The most recently used method will appear on the next screen. Use the Edit menu to clear the table. We'll make a running list of each step that we wish to schedule in our method. We enter a new command by clicking on the box in the column headed Event. A tiny arrow appears in the right hand lower corner. Right click on the arrow to open a menu for the options for commands. The first thing that we want to do is rinse out the column with one molar sodium hydroxide. 
This is used to clean off the surface in a reproducible manner. It scours any adsorbed material and actually etches a tiny amount of glass, perhaps as much as a nanometer in depth, off of the inside wall of the capillary. There are several selections we need to make on this page. First, we want to push the solution through the capillary by pressure. That is usually the default choice. We need to tell the instrument which container on the inlet side has this sodium hydroxide. That's in position A4 in this demo. We also want to designate the waste container that's partly filled with water on the outlet side. I put that in position B1 on the outlet tray need to specify the pressure to apply, let's use 10 pounds per square inch. And we'll do this for one minute. And we click OK. Next we'll do a rinse with deionized water. I put the water in position A3 on the inlet side. All of the other choices will be the same as with the sodium hydroxide, so we can click OK. Next we will want to refill the capillary with the run buffer that we tend to use during the separation step. I've placed that buffer in position A2. Again, all of the other parameters are the same as the previous rinses. Now let's set the wavelength for our detector at an appropriate value. I'm going to look at some aromatic acids in this demonstration, so I've selected a wavelength of 214 where they all absorb. The next step in the schedule is to inject a very short plug of sample at the inlet side of the capillary. We'll do this using pressure. In some experiments, such as using gel-filled capillaries, it is more appropriate to introduce the sample by applying a voltage and letting it migrate into the capillary under the force of the electric field. However, we'll use pressure today. The sample will be in position A1, and the outlet side will be the same as for the rinses. The waste file is in B1. Notice that we'll use a very small pressure, 0.5 psi, and apply the pressure for only 5 seconds. Click OK. Now we'll set the parameters for the separation step, so we choose Separate. Today I want to look at anions, and so I'm using a special detergent in the buffer to enhance their movement toward the positively charged electrode. That happens to be the reverse of the normal situation, so I want to select reverse polarity down here so that the detector is at the positive end of the capillary. Up here I'll choose the applied voltage. This system can run at voltages up to 30 kilovolts. I'm going to set it at 15 kilovolts for this demo. I've found that all the solutes emerge in less than 10 minutes, but I'll put the duration to 10 minutes just to be sure. I can always stop the run early. Now here is a critical point. I want to choose a vial with buffer at both the inlet and the outlet ends. The solution should be used for nothing else. They should be used only during the separation step itself in order to keep them clean and consistent from run to run. Today I've used position B1 on the inlet side and A1 on the outlet side. I also need to check the box that says at time and set it to zero for the time for this event to begin. Solutes begin to move at the moment the voltage of the capillary is turned on, so we set this event to time zero in order to get an accurate time of migration for each solute as it travels from the inlet of the capillary to the detector window. Then we can click OK. I'm going to introduce an auto zero step. The detector has a tendency to drift when the voltage is first turned on. I'm going to give it a little time to respond and then re-zero the signal. I know nothing comes out before about 0.3 minutes under my condition, so that's what I'm setting here. We need to tell the instrument to stop collecting data at the end of the run, so I'm setting that at time 10.01 minutes. Click OK. All methods must have an end statement at the end of the sequence of events, so we set that at 10.02 minutes and click OK. We have a complete method, so let's save that by opening the file drop-down menu and choosing the method and Save As. So we type in a file name and save it. Suppose we just realized that we omitted an important step. For example, I wanted to do the separation at 35 degrees. I could insert an event. I'll do that up here before the run actually starts. So I move up to the pull-down menu and say Insert. A new row opens, and we click on the event box and open the menu to select capillary temperature. 
we can enter the new temperature and click OK. Now we can save the method under the same name. Before we start a run, let's take a look at the initial conditions for the PDA detector. We want to be sure that the Enable Acquisition box has been checked. It's the one in the upper left-hand corner. Click the tab for the initial conditions. We may want to set the buffer at 35 degrees before the start of the experiment. Set the temperature on this page. Now let's go back to the control menu and start a run by clicking on the blue arrow at the top of the screen and clicking single run. Make sure your data is going to be placed in the right folder by checking the data path. Then create a data file name. Press start to begin the run. The computer may display the magnitude of the current as a function of time on the first graph. It reaches a constant level in about 10 seconds. Normally you're not interested in this unless you're trying to diagnose some problem. We want to see the detector output, so under the View pull-down menu, select PDA and Electropharogram. Here is a completed run. We can move the cursor around to find the migration time and amplitude of a given peak. The corresponding values for the cursor show up in the upper left-hand corner. You can also get the instrument to read the peak heights and migration times by pressing the Analyze button at the top of the screen. To view the results, click on the pull-down menu called Reports and select the View Percent Area. A word of caution here, use the absolute values for the area or peak height rather than the percentage values. At the end of your working day, open the method called Water Rinse. This is important to keep the capillary from clogging during storage. Be sure that there's water in positions A4 and A5 on the inlet tray and a water-filled container on, in position B1 on the outlet tray. After this process has run for at least five minutes, you can stop the run and shut down the instrument. Please sign the logbook.